Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome to the 14 pillars, the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as for everyone, our Ramadan special here on Imam Hussain TV where today we are discussing the benefits of reciting salawat on our beloved Prophet Muhammad and the holy household, peace and blessings be upon them. We would like to extend our deepest of congratulations to you all on entering the holy month of Mahi Ramadan. My name is Sister Sayyida Mahdi and I'm joined once again by Sister Dua, Sister Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sister, thank you once again for joining us. It's a huge honor for us to have you with us here today on our show once again. And inshallah, we can learn more from you, especially in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan, which is a month where we should be trying to learn and grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. And what better show to start off for Mahi Ramadan by discussing the merits and benefit of reciting salawat on our beloved Prophet Muhammad and the holy household, peace and blessings be upon them. Now we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in numerous narrations tells us that even by reciting one salawat, the, the merits and the benefit are tenfold. By reciting one salawat, you get 10 times a thawab, especially on those more important days, for example, the day of Jum'ah, the Friday, and especially in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan. So sister, let's start off today's topic of discussion, salawat and its benefits, by looking at why do we actually recite salawat on our beloved Prophet Muhammad and the holy household, and what are the benefits and merits, merits associated by reciting this salawat? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 56, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know, the benefits of these salawat were not only brought to the Prophet Muhammad's nation, peace and blessings be upon him, they were there before the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was born. And this holy verse that we recite in the Holy Quran, when we listen to it and read it and we recite the salawat on the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, our souls, they feel like they're cheerful. We feel this indescribable feeling towards praising the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Now, as I said, these benefits of the salawat were not only brought to the nation Muhammad and his his nation, it was way before the Prophet Muhammad. For example, Imam Ali al-Hadi alayhi salam, he says, Inna Allah azza wa jal. اتَّخَذَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا لِكِثْرَتِهِ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى مُحَمَّدُ وَعَلَى مُحَمَّدُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Ibrahim as a khalil. He befriended him because he used to repeat the salawat on the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, plenty of times. You have in tafsir al-Imam al-Hasan al-Askari alayhi salam. He's translating the interpretation of this holy surah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 39, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فَرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يَذَبُّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيَوْنَ نِسَاءَكُمْ He says that Bani um, Israel complained to Moses alayhi salam. And they told him they have three misfortunes. The first misfortune that has fallen upon them is that the men of Bani Israel were forced to pick up heavy blocks, limestone blocks that they cannot lift to build pyramids. And Pharaoh feared that they would escape. So what he did is he chained their legs and they still had to lift, they were forced to have to lift that limestone block that their body couldn't pick up. Meanwhile, their legs are chained. And most of them would climb these pyramids to build them and they would fall from high heavy places and they would fall and they would collapse. Either they would die, either they would live with lifelong complications. And that was a misfortune that fell upon them. So they went to Moses and they complained. The second issue that they complained is what that the woman from Bani Israel, every time a man from the Pharaonic men saw them, he would come towards her and he would want to do evil towards her. And the Quran described it. That was an issue. So the third issue was that the woman, whenever they got pregnant, that baby had to be killed. And this was something that didn't last for a year or two. It lasted for a very long time. And Bani Israel needed an issue. They needed to solve this issue. So they went to Moses and they complained. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Moses, tell them 
أن يستعينوا بمصائبهم بذكر الصلاة على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد If you want to ace these misfortunes ace them with praising the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny So every time a man from Bani Israel wanted to lift a heavy limestone block, they would say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, and they would lift it up and it would feel light. And the ones who lived were more than those who fell on from high places and collapsed and died. The lady from Bani Israel, every time a man from Pharaoh and his men would look at a woman and have this evil towards her that they want to do some evil actions towards her, she would say the salawat, recite the salawat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove that hate and that evil from the one who has that hate for Pharaonic men. And the woman, this is in Tafsir Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam, the woman who would give birth, she would go to the desert, and she would give birth in the desert, and she would prays five times salawat on the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, and she would leave her baby there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend an angel who will raise that child and nurture that child until that child was older. And if you realize that these benefits of the salawat were not only brought for us and for the nation of Muhammad and the followers of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, for the previous nations as well, even from Adam alayhi salam. Now we don't want to go into discussion with Adam and Eve and what happened and how they were descended. Um, long story, we all know it. But Adam, when he was descended down to this earth, فَتَلَقَّى آدَم مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Adam chose these names who were Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And he praised the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Plenty of times Allah forgave him. Now, how many of us have tried this ourselves that when we fall through misfortunes and we have hawa'ij and, and, and du'as that we want to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't know how to, so all we do is recite the salawat plenty of times. Some people do a hundred times. Some people do a thousand times. Some people actually, for the severity of their hajjah, they do it 10,000 times and they get their hajjah. So we've tried it ourselves and the previous nations have also tried it. So it has a lot of benefits. MashaAllah, I really, I find it amazing that we, sometimes we look for long amal and long dua uh, if we're going through a problem or a situation in life. We also look for something which is very long. We think that has more merit and benefit in, 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 in having our duas accepted. But the simplest of salawat, which is so simple that we re we teach our children daily and we recite numerous times in a day and we don't actually realize the benefits, benefits and the merits of that simple salawat and how close it brings us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it helps us in our daily lives and how it helps for us to have our duas inshallah accepted as well. And just like you said, it was there from Nabi Adam and Nabi Adam's time, Nabi Ibrahim's time. Before, you know, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came onto this earth, it was there that salawat was already there. Now, taking into account what you've said, our beloved, peace, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has also said that the one who recites salawat on me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of resurrection will create nur, light, on his head, on the left and the right, on the front and the back, up and down and all over his body. So we know that this recitation of salawat will create so much nur on the person who actually recites it. So taking this hadith into account and everything that you've already said, does the benefits of salawat have merely an effect for us in this world, on this earth, or does it become multiplied with the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our hereafter and our akhirah as well, sister? You know, as you said, um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he says, اِكْثَرُ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَيَّ نُورٌ فِي الْقَبْرِ وَنُورٌ فِي الصِّرَاطِ وَنُورٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ You know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, says, repeat the salawat plenty of times on me because it's nur in your grave and in the day of uh, resurrection on the surat al-mustaqim and in heaven. As you said, you will see nur on your left, your side. Now let's just stop here by nurun fil qabr. Because if you read throughout the narrations, you realize that the darkest moment of anyone's life, whether it's this life, next life, it's the darkness of your grave. It's the darkness of the dark. 
that human beings can't bear, this feeling. Have you ever tried it when you're in your home and you turn off all the lights and you keep one table lamp on and then someone comes and closes it and you feel like, where am I walking? Where am I sitting? To walk, to turn back off the light. It's darker than that in your grave. Or if you were somewhere, you know, near a farm and there's no lights, street lights, and you turn off your car, you realize it's dark. It's darker than that in your grave. The Prophet says, Ikthuru, repeat it plenty of times. The salawat, praise me, fa'innaha nurun fil qabr. It's that flashlight, that lantern that we're going to have in our graves. And then he says, nurun fil sirat. It's what's going to guide us to continue walking in that path of sirat al-mustaqim. And then he says, nurun fil jannah. And it's the nur that you just described, nur in front of you, behind you, nur. So, um, it's not only limited to this world, the benefits, but way in the hereafter. One day the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and this, every time a question the Prophet asks, it's not that he doesn't know, he knows, but he wants us to know. How many verses in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks questions? Allah doesn't know, Allah knows, but he wants us to know the answer. One day the Prophet Muhammad saw his uncle Hamza and his cousin Ja'far in his dream. So what he said to them, he asked them, what is the best thing that you've seen in the life of Barzakh? The best thing that you've examined. They said, فَدَيْنَاكَ بِالْآبَاءِ وَالْأَجْدَادِ May we all be your ransom, O Muhammad. Us and our ancestors. All be your ransom. The best thing that we viewed in the life of Barzakh is As-salatu alayk. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. وَسَقِّيَ الْمَاءِ وَحُبُّ عَلِي ibn Abi Talib. Praising you is the best thing that we viewed in the life of Barzakh. Now we don't know, narration doesn't tell us. What is it? It's a surprise. And saqi al quenching people water. Now back in the days, water wasn't accessible. And because it wasn't accessible, people would collapse and you know, traveling from one place to a place. So that has its benefits, even today. Even today, when you are trying to serve, for example, in a masjid, in a mosque, and the least they give you is give serve water. That has its benefits, you know. Or if you're in Ziyarat al-Arba'in and you just serve water, that has its benefits, its effects. You'll see it there. It comes right after the salawat. If someone comes to your house, you quench the water. That has its benefits. وحب علي بن أبي طالب the love that one believer has towards Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now, if we go back to this verse that we began with, Surah Al-Ahzab, verse uh, 56, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Bismillah ar rahim Inna Allah. وَمَلَائِكَتَهِ يُصَلُّونَ Allah and the angels يُصَلُّونَ يُصَلُّونَ is فعل مضارع يُصَلُّونَ It's a present verb. So it's not past tense. It's present. Not صَلَّوا يُصَلُّونَ That means they're constantly praising the Prophet even till today, even till now, till the second. They're praising the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَ يُصَلُّونَ They're praising right now the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Then it comes a command. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا This message is for the believers. O oh, you believers. صَلُّوا صَلُّوا is amr, is a command. صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Now, Allah صلى الله عليه محمد وعلى محمد People think تسليم is salam. No. تسليم is submit. Submit towards them. You know how when a police catches someone and they try to run away and escape and they say salim like submit means follow the rules that's it follow give up salim that's the taslim that Allah means because if it meant salam then Allah would say in Allah wa malakatuh yusallun wa yusallimun but no Allah stopped it here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not follow he does not submit everyone submits towards Allah so in Allah wa malakatuh yusallun and then it changes the topic to the believers صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا You submit towards the Prophet. Halal, halal, halam, haram. That's it. Sallim, submit and praise him. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels are praising the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, constantly, nonstop, why are we asked and given this command to praise the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him? Does the Prophet want to benefit from us? Allah and the angels are praising the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny. But it's because Allah wants us to take from these benefits, to benefit from these benefits of the salawat. The Prophet Muhammad, rahmatan lil alameen, he's merciful. We take from him so much. 
so much merits and so much benefits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells, this is a hadith Qudsi, tells his angels, Ya malaikati, wa ya sukkan samawati, O oh you angels, idha antum sallaytum ala habibi Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad, if you praise my beloved Muhammad, falaqad sabbahtumuni, subhanallah, wa qaddastumuni, alhamdulillah, wa hallaltumuni, la ilaha illallah. If you praise the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, it's as if you have praised me and did the tasbih, alhamdulillah, subhanallah. It's similar, similar like. And this is why the angels, they constantly praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you, we realize here two things. The angels, in Allah wa malaikatu yusallun, because the angels are tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tahmeed and tahleel. And it's the same thing. So this is why the verse says, in Allah wa malaikatu yusallun. It's constantly. And when we... S recite the salawat on the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him it's as if we are doing tasbih tahl it's similar not it is it's similar as to saying alhamdulillah subhanallah wa la ilaha illallah so it's like praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it does have its benefits in this world in the hereafter and this is the least that we can do in this month of Ramadan you know to praise the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him Absolutely. And just like you said, it is the least that we can do, especially in this holy month of uh, Mahi Ramadan. And I think the way that you've explained it is beautiful. And it's a lesson to me to recite salawat more and more. And we become complacent. We become busy in our lives. And we think that salawat is only restricted to certain times of the day when we're sitting on our sajada, facing the qibla, praying namaz. It's not. We can be reciting it when we're doing our household chores, when we're cooking, when we're cleaning, when, our, when we're doing things for our children. You know, it can, it's something so simple and it should be recited daily as often as we can. And I think it's, it's a lesson for me first that it's not an excuse to become complacent and to forget the salawat, especially because you said that the angels are in constant dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's given as a comparison, it's a similarity to the reward of doing dhikr on uh, beloved Prophet Muhammad and sending salams on uh, beloved Prophet Muhammad and the holy household, peace and blessings be upon them. So in essence, if we're not doing it, we are the ones who are missing out. Like you said, our beloved Prophet does not need these salams and the salawat on him. He doesn't need this, it's for us. Like you said, it's the nur that is created for us when we are in our graves, in the darkness of our grave, when we are alone, when our family has left us, it's a benefit for us, it's nur for us in our graves and on the day of resurrection. So inshallah, it's something that, especially in this holy month of Ramadan, we can start by reciting more salawat then, inshallah, teaching this to our children as well. Now, looking at the salawat more in detail, we, whenever we're younger, we, we're told we recite salawat at the beginning of every supplication and at the end of a supplication. Um, and we teach this to our children as well, but we don't always necessarily understand why it is actually that we are starting every supplication with salawat, peace and blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad and his holy household. So why is it, sister, why before every dua that we recite, are we reciting salawat? One of them, one of the benefits also of the salawat is to guarantee your answer. So if you realize in the months of this Shahar Ramadan and the supplications, or in all supplications, it begins with Bismillah ar rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. And then when we want to ask something from Allah, warhamna bihaqi Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. Wa salli ala Muhammad wa al-Muhammad and give us this bihaqi Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. And we want this bihaqi Muhammad wa al-Muhammad. Fa salli ala Muhammad. It's like wrapped up the dua, the supplication, what we ask Allah. It's wrapped up all around it with the salawat of the Prophet. You praise the Prophet. You say, Bihaqi Muhammad wa Muhammad, salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. I want this. Bihaqi Muhammad wa Muhammad. And we end all our supplications with Muhammad wa Muhammad. Allah salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. It's to guarantee your answer. A guarantee for your answers, for our duas. Even if we pray, we say, Subhan Rabbi ala wa bihamdi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Subhan Rabbil Azim wa bihamdi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. It's a guarantee for our salah to be accepted, to be approved. Now, a lot of people say, um, you know, we read these supplications in the holy month of Ramadan and we don't get our hajah. One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the believer. How faithful are you with these salawat? Are you going to say it once and get your hajah? Or are you going to keep repeating and reciting? Two, if we realize and we turn back and realize everything we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been accepted. 
But Allah chooses the right moment and the right time. And he tests us because we claim that we're believers. So he's not going to give it right away. It takes time. Some people, they get it right away. It depends on their level of faith. Those who have that strongest faith, Allah wants to test you. How strong is your faith? What you say? You say you have a strong faith? I'm going to test you. So are you going to keep repeating the salawat and these supplications in the holy month of Ramadan? Or are you going to say, no, last year, you know, I praised and I did all these supplications and I didn't get anything accepted. That's you proving your level of faith. So one, it, it's going to guarantee our answer with these salawat, even if we didn't get it this year, in this month of Ramadan or next year, one year you're going to turn back and you're like, wow, my hajjah was accepted and there was a guarantee for it. So this recitation, one of the benefits is that you guarantee your answer. And this is why we see it in all our supplications. It begins with Muhammad wa Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And it ends with praising the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. MashaAllah, it's like, um, you know, it's a gift to us really. If you think about it, where we praise our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We take his name, we recite our dua. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our hajat and we end in the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. So for us, the salawat is a gift. And like you said, it's a way of our hajat and our du'as being answered faster. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks upon us with more mercy when we recite this salawat. It doesn't guarantee that our du'as and our hajat will be accepted there and then. He, he tests us. He waits. How much do we yearn for that du'a to be accepted? How faithful are we? How obedient are we to him? But inshallah, by taking the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad and the Holy Household, our hajat are taken faster to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah, they hold a higher merit in the, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as the end of the, of the episode today, as we draw towards the end of this episode, let's just quickly have a look at the ahkam. When we take the name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, what are the certain respects that we should have when we take his holy name? And when does it become obligatory upon us when we hear his name? When is it obligatory to do salawat after we take his name? You know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, says, Al-Bakhil, man sama'a ismi wa lam yusalli alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. If you really want to know who the stingiest is, like the, the stingy comes in different levels. The stingiest, the Prophet says, and the one who hears my name and does not praise me. The Prophet in another hadith says, Urfa'u aswatakum bis salati alayhi, fa inna salata alayya tadhab bin nifaq. Raise your voices loudly with reciting salawat on me. That will reveal hypocrisy and it will remove hypocrisy. You know, sometimes in the majalis we gather and the name Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad is mentioned. You see people saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And you see people. The Prophet says, raise your voice. It reveals who's the hypocrite. And if there was hypocrisy, it will remove it. Let me give you an example. It's like, I see you and I claim that I like you, right? And the moment I see you, I just turn my face. But the moment I see you, I say, Sayyida Mahdiya, which one reveals hypocrisy? When you say you love the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and you hear his name, urfa'u aswatakum, raise your voices loudly and praise the Prophet. That means there's no hypocrisy. You love the Prophet. Urfa'uha. So one of the things we need to pay attention to that when we are in the majalis and we hear the name of the Prophet, don't say, I don't need to say it out loud. I said it in my heart. Raise your voice. It's like how you would approach someone you love. Raise it. Number one. Two, it's obligatory when you hear the name of the Prophet to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Al-Bakhil, the stingiest one, is the one who does not praise the Prophet. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam he says in a narration, Man salla ala nabi salatan wahida. If you praise the Prophet one salawat, recite one salawat, Sallallahu alayhi, Allah will praise you. Wal malaika fi alif saf min al malaika. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise you 
a thousand times in a thousand rows of angels. Salatan wahida. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. And then the Imam Sadiq alayhi salam here says in this narration, and this is in Wursa'il al-Shia, he says that, وَمَا بَقِيَ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا وَصَلَّى عَلَى النَّبِيِّ Everything in this earth praises the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and his holy progeny. Well, well, the one who's ignorant is the one who doesn't praise the Prophet. الجاهل مَنْ لَمْ يُصَلِّي عَلَى النَّبِيِّ Why? It's like giving your six-month-old baby a million pounds cash. Putting a six-month-old and a million pounds around them. What are they going to do? They don't know the value of this money. We know the value of this money. The salawat, the one who is ignorant is the one who doesn't know the value of this salawat. The one who does not want to praise the Prophet. It's good for you. It benefits you in this world, in the next world, in the hereafter, in paradise, in Jannah, in the salat. It's for you. It's for your hawaj. It's for your, to ace your misfortunes. And Allah will praise you. And Alif Saf min al malaika will praise you a thousand times. And it's one salawat. So imagine how much if we praise the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, how much benefits are we getting? And there are things that we don't know. It's left, left unknown. And, and it's very important to discuss the salawat because sometimes we just get used to saying salawat, but we don't know what's behind it. And once we know, it will encourage us, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. A lot of people don't have time to read Dua Jawshan, Dua Bi Hamza Thamani. They don't have time to like read every day Juz in the Quran. Um, now it's not encouraging you not to do those, but once they really don't, you know, they're driving, they're working long hours, and they don't even have time to listen because they're always in meetings and always on phone calls. The least you can do is praise the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I think the, the word that stands out in my mind is value. We don't, as, as non-ma'asum, we don't realize the, the value of salawat. And especially in this holy month of Ramadan where our rewards are multiplied, especially when we're fasting, the value of salawat for us is a benefit for us, for our children, for our home, for our akhirah, like you've spoken about. And you rightfully said that the salawat that we recite, the value that, that so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises us, so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his mercy and his blessings on us, even with one salawat, we would be doing a mis, a, an injustice to us ourselves by not reciting this salawat. Dear sister, we have come towards the end of today's episode, but we've learned so much from this short episode, the benefits of salawat, how it doesn't just help us in this world, it helps us in the akhirah as well, especially in the darkness of our grave on the day of resurrection, how it brings nur onto our bodies, the left, the right, all around us, how the angels, they're in constant praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we are reciting salawat, it's as if we are doing that praise of Allah as well. So surely we can use this month to better ourselves, to recite salawat more. And just like you said, in our busy lives, we often don't get the time to recite as much Quran as we want to, especially in this holy month, or to recite Joshna Kabir, but the salawat itself has so much merits that inshallah we can put this into our daily lives, use this month for it to become a habit and teach our children as well. And inshallah we can use this month to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to learn from the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, and to better ourselves and to help the children and the community around us as well. Thank you so much, dear sister, for joining us. Inshallah, we pray for each other in this holy month. We pray for all our viewers. And inshallah, they keep us in their du'as as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Sadly, this is the end of our episode today. We pray for the marid and the shifa of all the marid around the world. We pray for the eternal safety and quick reappearance of our beloved Imam Zamana, alayhi salam. Until next time, dear viewers, thank you for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.